last Monday, that is September the 13th, 2021, many pupils returned to schools across Lagos after some weeks of holidays. But according to the Lagos State Government, not all schools opened at once. The government directed that students of model colleges and upgraded schools should resume in batches from Sunday the 19th, September 2021. This is an obvious reaction to the third wave of COVID-19 in Lagos State. Meanwhile, parents of Lagos State model colleges have kicked against a new increase in the feeding and welfare fees for students enrolled in the school. There are reports that the state government has increased the feeding and welfare fee from 25,000 to 50,000 Naira. The Commissioner for Education in Lagos State, Mrs. Folashade Adefisayo, will be helping us to understand uh, these issues, including the Eco Digital School Initiative, the infrastructure renewal in Lagos schools in the last two years, and many other allied issues on the morning show this morning. Honorable Commissioner, you're welcome. I mean, uh, Mrs. Falasha Adebisayo is a Nigerian academic and a teacher, and she's the current commissioner for Lagos State Ministry of Education. She attended the University of Ibadan, Lagos State, uh, University of Nottingham, where she obtained another master's degree in education. I just thought that I needed to, you know, read out your uh, <laughs> qualifications, yeah. of course, credentials. Yeah. So you're welcome, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you very Good much. Good to have nice you to be here. in Thank the studio. You. Uh, it's a staggered resumption for uh, pupils and students in Lagos State, especially for uh, the ones in public schools. Why did you adopt that strategy, that method? Oh, no, not all public schools. It's okay. the model schools, and it's because they are boarding schools. And, you know, WIAC is still ongoing. And it will be difficult to have seven sets in school at the same time. So we said, look, let's have a staggered renewal. When WIAC is over, the whole school will resume. resume. Yes, it's mainly because of that. And of course, COVID, because we have to keep social distance. But with seven sets in school, that would be pretty difficult. Mm. I mean, talking about model colleges, it, as Steve read in his introduction, there, there have been reports that people aren't always happy about uh, the increase of fees, you know, in, in any type of situation. But um, the, there are reports that the state government has increased the feeding and welfare fee from, doubled it rather, from 25,000 to 50,000. Is that the case? And if that is the case, what is that uh, increasement for? Well, it's the boarding fees. You know, we provide free education, so it doesn't cover teachers' salaries and so on. But uh, we, there's no commitment to feeding children free in the boarding house. So it's really to cover the cost of running the boarding house. And we've held the 25,000 Naira fees constant for like 18 years. And of course, it was getting very difficult to run the schools on, the, on 25,000 Naira. And so we held the decision to increase fees. But we've been negotiating with parents. And I'm glad to say that I think we've reached a, a fair compromise. It's now 35,000 Naira. And there are also other conditions attendant that we think will ensure that we, we run the schools in such a way that they are comfortable with it, and we too are comfortable with it. But, but, but you, the report that we had was that you, uh, Lagos State government actually moved it, you know, proposed uh, 150,000 Naira. We read that, and then uh, it was meant to come down to 75,000 and then 50 uh, until uh, the parents insisted on uh, 30,000. Uh, it's good now that you have assured us that you have reached a compromise of 35,000. But what about the other issues that the parents raised uh, regarding uh, alleged, uh, I won't say fraud, alleged uh, mismanagement, etc. so much so that they were asking that they should be part you know, of the management of, uh, you know, these funds, you know, for feeding, etc. Have you also reached an agreement on that with them? Well, that's why I said the conditions are tenable. I must comment on 150,000. Never heard of that, actually. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear that. But there were all sorts of rumors around that time. And if you watch, I, I try to keep the discourse as civil and, right. as possible. Uh, the, you know, what's going to happen now is that... Um, we will both, we, we have set up a boarding house committee. Okay. The parents made a lot of, uh, they alleged a lot uh, against the school okay. authorities. I, I, I'm hesitant to really comment on that because I know that 25,000 was pretty tough for them mm. to run the school, but uh, the parents didn't agree, felt 
that was because things are not effectively and efficiently done and so on and so forth. So we both agreed. I think this, we've been <laughs> talking to each other for weeks. And uh, on Tuesday, I agreed at the House of Assembly that um, we would set up a boarding house committee made up of parents, the school, as well as the school management committee, which includes outsiders. Uh, uh, there'll be about seven people and they would run the boarding, they would manage the boarding fee. Now, this 35,000 Naira. Oh. Parents, we do not want them to pay a penny. Uh, people have asked, what about the normal peer parent forum levies and so on? Oh. No. Let's, let's, let's see the proof of concept. Let's, let's prove that 35,000 is sufficient. Uh, so there'll be no extra funds from anywhere. We'll just manage the 35,000 Naira together. I think that's, that was what we agreed. And they were quite, they were okay with it. Yeah, we but, signed but, together. But that's fine, but you know, part of uh, the issues that they raise is, is, is to emphasize the paradox of uh, minimum wage being 30,000. Mm. Uh, and uh, many of the parents, you know, sending their, their, their wards to school are also maybe public servants, you know, who are also earning not very much. So if you say that it's tough, to run per term, uh, uh, feedings, etc., on 25,000. Again, the point is that the same government is unable to pay more than what he thinks you know, he can pay. So are, are we saying, therefore, uh, that uh, parents who earn between 30,000 to 100,000 cannot send, parents with two or three kids in school cannot send their words to school? How oh, would no, they cope? We only have 30 model schools. We have uh, 300 and we had uh, 350 or so junior secondary schools. Real, it's, so a they choice, don't, they it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. The choice. That's the choice that they made. It's like when you say some schools are charging millions. Why did you send your child there if you can't, you know, please, that, that's it. It's a choice. <laughs> you know, on the topic of choice, as you said, there are model schools, there are usual normal public schools, and then you have lots and lots of private schools. And it does seem as though within Lagos State, not all of those schools have been accredited by the state. Some, a number of around 20,000. Can you shed some light on that? on why there seems to be such a huge disparity on the presence of these private institutions, but the fact that they are being able to operate without accreditation from the state. Well, what, what we've done, we, this was a huge problem, inherited problem, over many, many years. And as a consultant in, in the private sector, I also worked on a lot of these uh, issues with private schools. Uh, the government continues to work on accrediting them. Uh, many are operating below the radar, of course. But we, what we've done now is we, we have a register. We know where they are. So the process of accreditation is a continuous process. But as you accredit, they open uh, new schools. Because as you know, the state is growing in leaps and bounds. Uh -huh. Population is uh, exploding. exploding and there is no gap, there is no vacuum in nature, and no vacuum in the school system either. Children have to go to school, mm -hmm. and so these schools keep opening. But we keep on working on accrediting them. But I'd imagine the accreditation process isn't a, a one stamp fits all. Not every mm -hmm. single institution is worthy of being accredited. No. So what happens in situations where you have schools that are operating outside of being accredited, and even if you were to put your eye on them and would, you would not give them the accreditation, what happens then? That was why there was a, a collaboration between uh, Lagos State and, um, uh, and, and uh, uh, an international partner some years ago. But that was before I got there. And they set up this organization called Deepen to essentially help low-cost private schools, as we call many of them, to improve on their practice, uh, improve teaching practice, improve on their money. Because again, they, you have to run part of a school like a business. You are taking school fees, you are making payments, you have to make a surplus in order to be sustainable. And so they worked with a lot of them. And that uh, initiative is what we want to continue following, so that we support many of them to be as good as they can possibly be. Because in closing down those schools, uh, we can, we, we'll close down the worst. And we did during the COVID uh, period. We were able to to get some that were really in really bad state. But in closing them down, remember there are children there. Okay. And what alternative do we have to offer them? Mm -hmm. the, the, the ratio is still 20% public to about 80% private school? For in, primary in, and secondary schools? In terms of numbers, possibly, but not in terms of enrollment and population. Oh. Population maybe 60, uh, maybe closer to 60, 40. Okay, uh, Honorable Commissioner, for somebody uh, like your good self who has worked, you know, uh, in the private sector for a long time and now with, you know, public sector responsibility, how do you respond to uh, this consistent um, bashing of public schools in Lagos State, like other parts of Nigeria, 
um, I know for a fact that, yes, it, you know, on a general note, things might look very blurry. But then um, many times we see brilliant students come out of public schools. We see them, you know, uh, YEG jam, you know, scoring. And then how bad is the situation in public schools? Because we know that Modia colleges are also public schools, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, so when they say that things have collapsed, the public schools uh, that we attended in those days, nobody can send their, you know, was there yeah, anymore. No. Is that the true picture of what you are experiencing as, as Commissioner for Education no, in no, Lagos no, no. State? I think there are lots of assumptions when you're outside the system, but when you come in, you are amazed at what you see. Yeah. Uh, what is happening, yeah, it's not like it used to be. I went to a public secondary school. I think that was normal at that time. Yeah. And, uh, but what we are seeing more and more is that um, we are investing. You see, the, the government of Governor Babajide Songulu has made a a deliberate promise that we will focus on education. And he has, you know, apart from the, you know, the themes agenda that we all talk about, the mm. E there, we talks about education and technology. It really talks a lot about the nexus, the, that point where they meet. But even beyond that, there's a lot being done to improve schools. We're working on teachers, we're working on infrastructure, we are working on resourcing schools and providing them with uh, what they need to run their schools. And so more and more, we are even, deliberately impacting uh, how children are taught in school. And so more and more we see that uh, results get better and better. It's not, uh, and when you are dealing with education, you cannot afford to be impatient and ask for three, three, three month results. We are not buying rice and supplying rice. We're talking about lives. And so it does take maybe some time, but if you look into them very well, you see that there's been significant improvement. And the morale of teachers has been boosted because I think I always say this, infrastructure is great. But the most critical factor is what happens in the classroom between the teacher and the pupil and the student. And so that, that, that interaction, that relationship, we focused a lot of attention on it. And so it's not what, it's not what people say. Like you talk about results. I, I've had to, I'm working with two boys who had uh, 8A1s in WAEC. And, uh, and I said, look, give me the top 20 results. They range from 6A1s in WAEC to from about public schools. To, yes, from public schools across the state. To eight A ones. What we have to now do is focus on those who are not doing that well and look for options for them because not everybody needs to do work. Not everybody needs to go to university. But a lot of people, all our students, deserve to leave school with an, a, a skill with which they can make a living or which they can go to the next level in their career. So I think the the focus of attention has been so targeted. At, at education that I'm excited by the changes that I'm seeing myself. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can tell, but um, I, I, I did grow up, in a, grow up in another country. And of course I can tell. Can you? <laughs> Damn. I've, I've been working on it. Did you ask that question? I just, you know, no, sometimes, sometimes I feel like I can slip under the radar. You can, I see you're a teacher, you know better, right? So I grew up in a country where subsidized education was very important, making sure that economic means was not a reason why children wouldn't have access to quality education. Here in Lagos, for example, we do see lots of children out of school during term time. If I were to apply that to the country I was brought up in, it means a lot of problems for parents. If you are out on the streets during term time, during school time, you're going to be in trouble. Your parents are going to be in trouble. Is that the case here in Lagos? Because if it is, there are too many children I've seen on the street and out of school. How can we change that? Well, that's a source of deep concern for us as well. Because I think before, we always felt that there were no out-of-school children in Lagos. This is something for some other parts of Nigeria. But it's clear that it's happening here as well. And uh, I will not say that uh, children on the streets, uh, their parents would be uh, caught or anything. The Child Rights Act is very clear about it. But we haven't uh, uh, sufficiently enforced that act. And now we are talking with an agency where people they'll be driving around the state all day looking at children, you know, and you know, uh, helping them back to school, insisting that they go to school. And even apart from that, uh, we are also working on a concept where school will be meaningful. Because a lot of the time, when you talk to these parents, it's not because they don't want to, it's because they feel that there's no value. You go to school, what, what will come out of it? Nothing. The child will come back on the streets because there are no jobs, they, they, they leave school unskilled, and so on and so forth. So again, focusing on making schools relevant. And then there are deliberate drives. Like right now, our uh, SUBEB, the 
basic education board is going around local government by local government to markets, talking to market women that any child who, who is in who is in the market during school hours report the parents. So there are deliberate drives at local levels. Uh, it, it's a lot of work, but uh, I'm sure, like we said, we'll see the, the changes happening right before our eyes. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you uh, because we we're running out of time, but I'll be interested in knowing uh, the preparation of your ministry and the Lagos State Government in general. Uh, now that resumption is upon us, uh, COVID is ravaging. We've had of different schools um, asking for different demands, including uh, compulsory vaccination. What is um, the position of the Lagos State Government, particularly to public schools? Well, I'll say that the teachers were vaccinated. We, they were treated as um, frontline front line workers, so they all got vaccinated. They, 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 they had access let me put it that way, to vaccination centers. But as for the children, the normal things we insist on, wash your hands, wear your mask, maintain social distance in school, try to use as many rooms as possible in the school. Even labs are now classrooms and so on, oh. so that uh, there's some social distance. I, I can't uh, uh, exaggerate and say, oh, it's all hunky-dory, but I think uh, a lot of effort is being made. And <laughs> thank God, I, last session, oh, I don't want to talk, but we didn't have any incidents. <laughs> and I'm hoping that by saying it, I'm not uh, <laughs> tempting uh, fate, yes. but uh, last year we, we, we didn't have any incident, and this was what we did. Touchwood. 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 Honorable <laughs> Commissioner for Lashade, Adefisayo, thank you very much for joining us on the morning show today.